Okay, so it's pretty simple to understand where we're at now, Jessel, and everybody has been following along our trials and tribulations with the valve train. And we're here and we're going to essentially be talking to Grant here at Jessel. He's the one that knows the, the project intimately. He's got it brought up on his laptop. Grant says hi over here. And hi, everybody. He is the maestro, actually. He's going to make this thing all better. Guaranteed to run. What's the warranty going to be on this thing, by the way? Warranties. <laughs> we don't need a warranty. <laughs> no, that, where we're going, we don't need warranties. But So it's kind of fun. We were just talking about the business part of this thing and how he's modeled this thing in 3D. And as he's talking, I, you know what? I should video this because a lot of people ask the questions like, what well, essentially is changing from the old two-bolt two stand where the rocker arm was held on by a 5 16 fastener, two of them, and, and how's it progressed? How is it different now? And, and uh, I'm going to let Grant explain how it's different and what actually what this would be here now. So Basically what we're doing is this would be the head as it comes from DART, which is machined for individual exhaust rocker stand, individual intake rocker stand per cylinder. It's not a bad deal, it's quite antiquated, works for some applications, but we can make it better. So what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna come, we're gonna mill everything down flat, make a nice surface to work with. So this would be the machine variation. You'll notice there's some holes. These are the original locations. They're gonna get plugged. We're gonna put in inserts. We're gonna leave this hole alone because it already goes into the intake port. We don't want to add another hole into the intake port. So we're going to go off to the side. The new hole location will be somewhere in this general area of the port, but it won't protrude in. So we don't have to worry about oil getting in the fuel or in the motor. The biggest advantage is what we're doing. We're coming in with a one-piece, and it's pretty standard, but a one-piece rocker stand. So where the original exhaust bolt was, we're going to plug that drone tap for our 5 8 coarse thread insert, which is capped off, so it seals the water, water jacket, versus the time cert that's in there is open, it's not blind, so water can come up through that fastener. On the right side of the exhaust rocker, we're actually going to come through the shaft, through the stand, into the cylinder head with a 716 stud to tie everything together so that there's absolutely zero chance of lifting an exhaust rocker again. Leaving the original fastener for the intake, we're adding another fastener at a straight angle. So one is going to retain the four degree angle that's in the port. The other one is going to be straight, it's out of the port. So now we have two fasteners holding down the exhaust rocker into the head. Two fasteners, as was before, holding the intake rocker down into the cylinder head. We're going to take it a step up, and instead of using our standard 516 shaft, we're actually going to use a collet style shaft. Now this collet style shaft, what it does, it so allows us to use a larger fastener into the cylinder head on the exhaust rocker. On the intake rocker, we're just going to use a stud into the stand because there's not material in the head to allow us to put a stud in. The collet basically clamps the shaft, sits in the trough, and then, you know, stud in the head adds a lot of rigidity for trying to have this, the shaft basically walk in the stand. Now, this style setup uses bronze washers for thrust. Basically, with the tolerancing, there's no room for the rocker to move. No end play, yeah. There's no end play. Okay. Now, these bronze washers have cross-drilled radiuses in them to allow oil to get down into the bearing. This baby isn't going anywhere. No. Um, typical parts for us. What's that, what's that, if you want to tell them, what's the alloy on the, on the arms themselves. Are they similar to intake and exhaust, same way alloy? Yes. Yep, they're both made out of 4140. Uh, shafts are tool steel. Uh, 
pins tool steel, rollers tool steel, adjusters. What's the tool diameter steel. of that roller there then? Uh, wheel diameter is 550 thousandths of an inch. Are they both the same? They're both the same. It's a quarter inch wide roller with needles. Uh, the adjuster is a high polished ball adjuster. Will they have on those fasteners, the ball adjusters, will there be two different lengths on the ball adjusters between intake and exhaust or are they going to share the same length? They are identical. They're identical, okay. Yep. Yeah. Same, same components between intake and exhaust rocker other than the body itself. The shaft is just rotated around 180 degrees. Grant, what's the, the ratio? Is the ratio the same between the exhaust, the, the rack arm ratio, the same in the intake and the exhaust? Or are we, are we going to split them up? We're going to split them up. So the intake ratio is going to be a 1.85, and the exhaust ratio is going to be a 1.75. There you go. The a exhaust lot of pivot length is 2 inch. The intake pivot length is inch 850. A lot of people ask those questions, so there you got it. Right from the guy himself. It's pretty amazing that um, Jessel's got enough resources to, to come in here and take our heads, used by the way, and uh, I guess I'd consider model them and, and want to take on a project to this size where they model them, get the information that's needed, do a design on it, and, and fundamentally make it all start to finish, cradle to grave, whatever you want to say, make it all happen, all the way down to the, to the size of the fasteners, machining them and doing them, and, and Grant's the man that's been holding this project uh, by the hand the whole time. So it's pretty exciting to hear this right from him. We've been waiting for a year, and uh, um, it's well worth the wait. We're going to get it done right. So again, this will be the new exhaust bolt location. Pretty much as close as I can get it to, to the center line of the shaft, um, based on real estate that's available and what's already a hole in the head. This will be the stud through. This is the existing intake bolt location that's going to be on the four degree angle, retaining that. This will be the new intake bolt location. And again, as much as I want to put a stud through on this side, there's not enough real estate based on what's been removed from the cylinder head already. And if I put it on this side, the port's only about that thick, it's just going to rip it right out. Yep, that's right. I know this is going to be a challenge. It wouldn't be near the challenge here if this thing didn't have water ports in it. We'd have a lot more meat to work with here on, on these different scenarios. That's it. That's it. That's just wild. Yeah, and um, thank you for taking on this task too because it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. So yeah, It's my pleasure. Thanks, Jessel, for everything. And... Um, I, I, before I want to close out here, I want people to realize that it was Ben Strader. He's over there. Say hi, Ben. Uh, ben was the guy that introduced me to Grant here. So it, it truly is uh, Ben's connection that's made this all work, and I'm grateful for both. Thank you, everybody, for watching.